In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Simeon took the child Jesus, held him in his arms, praised God, saying, Master, you may now dismiss your servant, for my eyes have seen your salvation and the glory of your people, Israel. Those words are the center of the feast today, the feast of the presentation. They're beautiful words, and they're words by which Simeon tells the history of his life. What about us? What do they have to do with us? What about our lives? What good is it to us if Simeon receives into his hands and arms Jesus the Messiah, but we do not? What good is it to us of Simeon's, if Simeon's eyes see salvation and ours don't? What good is it to us if Simeon is set free to go in peace? But we aren't. It's not enough to come here today to celebrate Simeon receiving the child, seeing salvation, and being set free to go in peace. If that's all we do, if that's all this feast and this good news is about, then we've confined that story to a place far away and a time long ago and made it completely irrelevant to our lives. We have to let the truth of the story transcend its history. While there is historical truth, there is a deeper truth, a bigger truth, that is not limited by time and space. This story is an archetypal experience of something that is happening all the time, in all places, to all people. The truth of this story is happening right here and right now for you and me. This story is as much our story as it is Anna's and Simeon's. Simeon and Anna have been waiting for decades for this moment. Think about that. I mean, just think about that. Decades. They're waiting in the temple for this moment. Not for an hour on Sunday. Decades. Every day. Decades of waiting. Decades of not giving up. Decades of showing up. Simeon and Anna must have lived those years. We've got to imagine with hope, trust, and expectation. They had to have done. Every week, every day, every month, for decades, they're left waiting and wondering. Is this the day? Is this the day that I will see salvation? Or is this the day that I'll give up hope? Is this the day I'll experience the fulfillment of the promise of God? Or is this the day that I will despair that it will ever happen? Their lives were filled with trust and hope and expectation. And who among us hasn't lived like that? Who among us hasn't gone through that? We've all stood in that place, waiting, needing, 
hoping for something to happen. We got up each morning, and we have to decide whether we still believe in the future God has for us or whether we're going to give up. We all know what it's like to wait, waiting for life to change, waiting for the grief to go away, waiting for a prayer to be answered, for a surgery to be done, for joy to return, for reconciliation, for forgiveness, for clarity about a decision, for meaning and purpose and for healing and a new life. We wait and we hope for all sorts of things, like they did. I think we probably all come here today with some level of hope and expectation and anticipation. Because it seems to me, if not, then we're just mindlessly observing ritual mindlessly going through the Book of Common Prayer. But I think we come here today trusting and anticipating that the promise of God for each one of us is present and working in our lives even if we can't clearly see or understand what's exactly going on. So we show up and we wait for the miracle, if you will, That's what they did. So what was the miracle for Simeon and Anna, for us? I don't think it's that Simeon and Anna lived to be such a great age. And I don't think it's that Simeon held Jesus, the Messiah, in his hands and arms. I don't think the miracle is that Simeon's eyes saw salvation. And I don't think the miracle is that Simeon was set free to go in peace. Those things are happening all the time. They happen right here, right now. The presentation of God is all around us. So what's the miracle for Simeon and Anna? Here's what I think the miracle is. They hung in there. They continued to show up. They continued to be vigilant and attentive. They continued to watch and to look and to listen. They continued to trust the promise. They never despaired. They never walked away from the promise. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. That's the miracle. And you know, sometimes just showing up and hanging in there takes all that we have. It's difficult just to show up and do it. But you know what? That's always the question before us. That never goes away. Will we continue to hang in there? Will we continue to show up? Will we live with hope and trust? Will we be vigilant and awake so that will we notice the miracle when it happens? Simeon thought he was waiting for the child to show up. But what if it was really God waiting for Simeon and Anna to show up every day so that they could continue their interaction? Simeon thought he was presenting the child to God. But maybe Jesus was presenting the old man to God. Every day that Simeon and Anna showed up, the Spirit of God saw that 
and lifted them up and gave them strength. That's what this feast is about. And I learned that from an old woman named Ruthie. When I was an associate pastor in Kalamazoo, every week we had a special Eucharist and healing service. I loved that service. And every week, Ruthie showed up. Now, Ruthie's caregiver would bring her in, help her find a place to sit. Ruthie was essentially blind, and she was often confused. And on her rare, really bad days, she was unaware of what was going on around her. Her caregiver would lead Ruthie up for the anointing, and she would kneel down. And she would look up at me, and she would say, for my eyes and for my mind. And every week, I anointed Ruthie with the sacred oil, placed my hands on her head, and I prayed for her eyes and for her mind. And then her caregiver would take her back to her seat. Same thing at communion. Her caregiver brought her back up, and she held out her hands to hold in them the body of Jesus, to hold the Messiah in her hands. That happened week after week. She showed up every week for the two years that I was there. And it was always the same, for my eyes and for my mind. And every week, she was just as blind and confused when she left as when she came in. I couldn't help but wonder, what's going on here? Because I had the sense there was. And then one day it struck me, this is Simeon and Anna. Somehow, in her showing up, she understood with the confused mind something that I didn't get. That in all of that, she was being presented to God. She saw with eyes that were blind something my eyes did not see. She saw her own salvation. Every week she came, and every week she experienced this, and she was set free to go in peace. Her showing up, was the fulfillment of God's promises in her life. She showed up to claim what was already hers. She showed up to the reality of her life. What Simeon and Anna and Ruthie experienced is our gift too. It's our promise too. If we show up and are aware and see. The presentation of Jesus doesn't just happen in the temple in Jerusalem. It happens in the temple of our lives. Every moment of every day, week after week, month after month, year after year, decade after decade. It happens in the midst of waiting. It happens every time we show up to the reality of our life. You know, ever since last April when I found out I was going to have open heart surgery, my morning prayer changed. And it stayed changed in the days and weeks and months after my surgery. My morning prayer has become very short, very succinct, 
The first things I think every day, thank you. Thank you for the gift of this day. Help me to see. Ruthie's prayer of long ago had become my prayer. It's amazing how God uses each one of us to speak to one another. John Ortberg, author I like, has a book called God is Closer Than You Think. It's a great book. And he says something that's very apropos to this feast and kind of what I've been talking about. He says, I believe that the greatest moment of your life is this moment right here. This tick of the clock. This beat of your heart. The greatest moment of your life is now. This moment is God's irreplaceable gift to you. Most of all, this is the moment that matters because this moment is where God is. If you are going to be with God at all, You must be with God now, in this moment. Like Simeon, Anna, and Ruthie. Let's pray to wake up and to be aware. So that we can show up and realize what God is presenting to us in our lives every day. And also, what God is presenting to the world through us every day. Let's show up, wake up, and see. Amen.